<laughs> so loud. <laughs> Daisies blooming, sundress swaying in the breeze. I can't stop staring. You've put a spell on me, and I hope that you never decide to set me free. The way you're moving, it's got me moving. feeling that I could ever dare to dream is you forever moving next to me let's not waste time or take this slow we've got miles behind us but miles to go so let's just break this down to the simplest truth How you doing folks? Welcome back to the Food Forest Farm here at Tappanoth in Aberdeenshire, North East Scotland. So it's been a good month or so since we last made a dedicated farm vlog. So we've been enjoying the summer weather that we've been having here in Scotland while we've got some rain now. Uh, June was incredibly dry, hot and sunny. We've been busying ourselves carrying on the maintenance of some of these agroforestry systems like this little apple and cherry orchard that I'm walking through now. We also just enjoyed the good weather that we had. Um, we've been taking cold plunges in our barrel, which we originally bought for our shepherd's hut business, but um, we've just decided to keep it at our front door for now because we're enjoying it so much. So we've been doing daily um, cold water immersion, um, which has been fantastic, makes us feel really great. We've got my oldest daughter staying here for the summer holidays. She comes over for every holiday. We're all doing really well. And today we are starting a job that we have to do once a year, at least every two years, and that's mucking out the goat byre, the goat shed, uh, taking out the deep litter that has formed over the months, a um, mixture of straw, manure and urine, and then making use of that resource. And the reason that we're doing that today, um, apart from wanting to use this valuable resource of uh, animal manure, uh, is twofold, threefold really, actually. One, we get fantastic 
fertilizer from it. But also we've got to ready the place for goat kids arriving because certainly one of our goats, Heather, is definitely in kid. The other goat, Heli, we're not too sure about, but she could surprise us and produce some kids too. But we're expecting goat kids to arrive really any time now, potentially within the next five days. So we want to quickly just clean up the area a bit so that we've got a clean um, section of the byre for the goats to kid in. Also, we need to reduce the level of the bedding in here because we're banging our heads all the time when we go in to the goat shed right now. Uh, even the smallest members of the family are finding it a little bit hard to maneuver around whilst they're in there. So really just time to do a bit of maintenance to this old, slightly dilapidated shed that we built years and years ago when we had cows. This was what we built to house cows in and uh, it's been modified and changed over the years to be a house for goats. Um, it's the pallet palace we call it because it's mostly built from recycled pallets but um, it does its job it leaks a little bit we want to sort that out um, when it rains it leaks and we do want to sort that out but right now uh, it does its job and uh, we, we do we do love it really so the whole family has been mucking in mucking out so what we're going to be doing with this valuable resource in past years we've made compost from it today we're going to be mucking out the goat buyer <laughs> It is a good job because this means we get our compost supply for the next year for the market garden. So the, the goat bedding is going to be coming out of the goat buyer and taken to the hen run where it gets to break down in our compost heap. Hopefully that will be enough for next year to have as all our compost needs for the market garden. I'm just piling up the goat bedding and letting that compost down to uh, a beautiful soil that we've uh, used for growing vegetables. A couple of years ago, we decided to experiment making bokashi. Today, we've been concentrating on mucking out the goat buyer, uh, which is fermenting the, the goat bedding. And that also gave us some great results. You can check out the video in the link above. But today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this vast volume of bedding and we're gonna be mulching some tree rows in the west field. The west field is right next to the goat buyer. Earlier this year, we planted out a whole bunch of different fruit trees and shrubs on contour throughout the field with grazing strips in between. So this is what we call silver pasture, where we integrate productive trees into grazing. And we graze the goats with electric netting in between the rows of trees. Today, we really want to mulch the tree rows. Mulching the trees will really just help uh, the trees get started and grow well, it will conserve moisture, um, it will add fertility, it will start building uh, very great soils around the trees and it will suppress the grasses which will stop the trees getting lost in the long grass if we don't get around to cutting the grass enough around each tree because obviously we can't let the goats in around the trees because they'll eat the trees um, and it can be quite tough scything around the trees because um, you might risk uh, cutting down a, a young tree so it's easier for us to try and mulch out the grasses and so we're adding a really thick layer of this goat bedding all around the trees the tree rows themselves uh, vary in size but most of them are 40 meters long so we're going to be adding 40 meters length of the goat bedding um, and making it about two or even three meters wide just to make sure that we really give a really lovely application of this um, fertile material um oh you know what i haven't told you about the geese so last month we ended up buying ourselves some new geese so if you're regular viewers you'll know we've been keeping geese for quite a wee while and they were the white emden geese which we can see one of there but sadly over the years we've lost nearly all those geese to predators, foxes, maybe badgers. At the end of spring, we were left just with two male geese and this wasn't a good combination. They were fighting terribly. And then a fox came and took one away and we were left with one lone goose, one lone male goose. So we thought, right, let's get some more geese. I was really interested to see if we could find some Toulouse geese for sale, which is the variety that we've ended up getting. And we bought these from uh, a local smallholder who's been keeping geese for a long time. So we went and picked them up uh, and managed to get them from our car over to a small orchard, which is where we kept them for a while um, and introduced them to their male goose. He wasn't as interested as we thought he was going to be. We thought he would come running down uh, after being on his own for quite some time. 
but it was pretty casual they all took a while to get to know each other and to settle in uh, unfortunately we found it really hard to get the new geese into a house and so sadly we ended up losing a couple of geese always the way uh, Rosa and I went away um, to pick up my oldest daughter who's with us now and during that time we lost a couple of geese to the fox again but we've been working every day with the geese now to get them used to their house now they're herding very easily now they're, they're not as flighty as they first were when they arrived so we were managing to get them into their house every night now which means they're very safe uh, just a shame that we lost two so early on it would have been nice to have five females but we've now got three females and one male so we use the geese to graze around these sensitive areas of tree plantings and they do a great job also fantastic to fertilize um, the area with their manure. Uh, the geese produce copious amounts of manure. So they're very valuable to us. We, we love having the geese here um, and a big part of our permaculture system here at the farm. rumbles of thunder just now so I hope you guys can hear me over the wind so it's slow work slow progress uh, just using wheelbarrows right now definitely itching to start getting the BCS and our trailer out to get some bigger loads up here but for now that porch area of the goat shed um, it's just easier to use wheelbarrows so that's what we're doing as you can see we're giving everything a nice application of mulch, really thick, really deep, lots of very nutritious material going on, full of goat manure and urine, and also absolutely covered with very nice seed. So normally we wouldn't be using this as mulch in a vegetable garden because there's a lot of wildflower seed, actually mostly red clover in this hay. But we're very happy for that to spread around in this field because we feel the field, the grasses and herbs in this field need a little bit more variation. So another benefit to doing this is that we can hopefully start encouraging more diversity of uh, flowering species in this pasture. I really can't tell if, how much we're going to be able to do. I'm about halfway through this tree row, but this is the smallest tree row we've got in this system. Um, so it won't take me long to finish this one. But then the next tree row up is a good 40 meters long. So yeah, maybe saying two days was a bit optimistic, but already it's looking great. Soil Food Web is really going to appreciate this thick application. The trees will then in turn enjoy that. It's going to preserve water in the soil, going to reduce the impact of the grasses growing while these trees are young. And it's going to make us identify the tree rows. I wish I could get the drone up to show you guys from above, but it's far too windy today. Um, but hopefully you're going to see these on contour, slightly wiggly, curvy lines of fruit trees spreading across this field.
So now that we've dug out the porch area, you can actually see through one of the pallets <laughs> how high uh, the rest of the buyer is, as in the floor, how high the floor is, um, from the amount of deep litter that's been put in there. Over the past, I think it's almost exactly two years now, um, I was just, just at the start of the pregnancy with Lily um, when we last did this and then have, we didn't do it last year with all the busyness of a new baby so yeah, it's been two years uh, so the floor has uh, yeah, gone up quite a lot um, so the positive is <laughs> yeah the positive is uh, we're gonna have lots of material for the tree rows negative is it's probably more than we've ever done in the buyer right now so we better get started We found a goat bell! Heli lost it maybe a year ago. That's pretty good. We just heard that while I was tipping out. Wow, this. I thought the goats were. I know, you had goats from the field. That? <laughs> yeah. That's oh. great! Yay. Good as new. All right, that's the first tree row mulched. Definitely speeded things up using the tractor. Also sped things up with uh, Lillian going and having some time with her grandmother. So here's the finished tree row. I think we could probably thicken it up here and there, but for now, this is a great start. Starting with a little aronia berry, chokeberry here, and uh, Ali Agnes apple tree and so on and so forth with uh, many different species of top fruit and soft fruit. As we dug down, of course, there's the light fluffy hay and straw mixture, which is on the top. And then it got heavier and wetter as we went down. It was pretty stinky actually, so uh, quite anaerobic. So it'd be great to get this out now, get some oxygen through it. Um, I'm sure the geese are gonna love sitting on here uh, during the day and at night time they often sit on piles of hay or mulch that we've left behind and that'll be great of course because they'll add their manure to it as well we'll definitely try and thicken it up it's a little bit narrow we have this one central row of crop trees like I said apples plums Ali Agnes uh, chokeberry Saskatoon um, and then what we're going to be doing is that on the north side of the row about half a meter out we're going to be planting species like willow and alder and poplar which we're going to class as our biomass trees so trees that are specifically grown for pollarding um, or coppicing but mostly pollarding so cutting branches off higher up the trunk and chopping those branches off and throwing that down on the ground as mulch as well. Hopefully this is the last time that we'll bring in organic matter like we're doing because it's obviously a lot of work. We want to make the organic matter, grow the organic matter in place. So having these biomass trees purposely growing at quite close proximity, when they grow up to a certain point, we'll cut them down. That's going to add organic matter just like this um, straw is. Uh, it's also going to release growth hormones from pruning back the trees 
which will encourage the other trees in the system to grow. And then on the south side, we're going to have a row of biomass shrubs, um, your herbaceous layer that you would find in a forest garden. Uh, so this is going to consist of smaller um, but very fast growing species like comfrey and sweet sicily, lovage, and we're going to have a row to the south and exactly like the biomass trees at the back, these are going to be purposely grown to chop and drop to feed the system, having a mulch plant right where you need it. So we want to make sure that we've got the width of this mulch correct and I would say it needs to come out just that little bit more because we're going to be wanting to plant a comfrey right about here. Um, we actually have some gooseberry that we've put in um, at the same time we planted this row back in the spring but I'm not happy with the placement so we're going to make sure we're going to dig these gooseberry up when they're dormant um, in the winter and we're going to put them in row um, as a target species crop crop tree. So yeah it's looking great I love being able to see um, the row this is obviously quite a small one and 12 meters up we have another row so we've got 12 meters of grazing for the goats and the geese and then we have another um, forest garden tree row which is much longer like I said it's about 40 meters so got the trailer with a little bit more um, bedding in there and we're gonna start the next row Right guys, I think we're gonna call it a day. Rose has just brought Lily to have a look at the work we've been doing. Anyway, that's a really great start to this job. Feels really good to get the buyer uh, started to get mucked out. Um, we've still got quite a fair bit to go, but then we've got quite a fair bit of fruit trees still to mulch. So um, we're gonna get two, two things done with this job. Nice clean goat shed and some very happy fruit trees. Hope you're all well out there. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time to the channel, please do subscribe, give the video a like, and we'll catch you all next time. See ya, bye bye.